can see, we're on day 36 of 66 days in a row, and today we're doing the Heroes range. Last time we tried to do a Heroes range and um, weren't able to actually see both opponents' whole cards, so, um, uh, or wasn't sure if I was able to, ended up being able to see both, but uh, we did a, a dual range reading. This time we're just doing the Heroes range. So let's take a look at some of our, um, I found my, I have my Finding Good Opponents report up, taking a look at some of the opponents that I have over 300 hands on who have good win rates as well. And um, we haven't looked at anything from Goats McTokes, Goats McTokes here. Um, six and a half big blind per 100 win rate, over 1,400 hands, pretty darn good. Looks like a tight aggressive player at 1814. Total AF, aggression factor is only two. Um, aggression factor, once again, is bets plus uh, raises divided by calls. So it's your aggressive aggressive actions. Um, it's a ratio of aggressive actions to calls post-flop. And then so he bets and raises two times for every one call he does. Interesting. Does a lot of attempting to steal. I'm sorry. Folding to steal. Attempt to steal, not so much. And then two bet and then folding to three bets, only 36%. So this guy likes to fight for pots. If he comes into a pot, initially he doesn't like to give up. As you can see, he only raises 14% right here, which means he has, a, a, on average, a more narrow range, probably wider in the later positions, of course. So let's take a look at Goats McToaks here. Uh, I might have looked him up at some time in the past. If I did, I don't see his name now. So, let's look see. Goats. There he is. Cool. So we basically just want to see showdown hand. All right. So let's take a look at him. Uh, he is a tighter razor. Let's find something where he might be on a steal. Let's look at some cutoff hands here. We can sort it by turn actions, even river actions, but bet, bet, raise, check, bet, bet. That might be an interesting one. I want to see actions on all streets, callings or betting check. There's a lot of checking right here. Let's take a look at some button later stuff. Raise, bet, bet, check. Okay, let's stick with that one cutoff hand. Raising preflop, bet, betting river. Uh, what's the date here? 6.22. There we go. And of course, we always need our trusty split suit template. Hand number... Whoops. 877-99478. And once again, like I said, we are... Where are we at? We're in the cutoff in this position. Oh, I wonder if I'm the villain. Nope, I fold. Okay, what do I fold? 8-9 offsuit. Yeah, that's cool. So cut off, open. Cool. So, oh, and then of course we have our other tool, ever-present Flopzilla for us. So in this hand, uh, Goats McToats, our hero, decides to open in the cutoff. Totally fine. Probably a decently wide range. Let's take a look at what his range is, raising first and in the cutoff. We've got uh, only 11%, so he's a pretty tight raiser. He ends up stealing uh, most of the time from the small blind and the button right here is, are his steal positions. In the cutoff, I mean, at 11% right there, he plays it pretty much like MP and EP. He probably has the same range for all three of those hands. Um you know, pocket pairs, some of the best suited connectors, suited Broadway, suited aces, that kind of stuff, are in his early position, and even cutoff opening range here. So before we see what the... Let's see what his... Two-bit range is. Let's put him on a pretty narrow range. Let's start him off. Let's not go as low as 6.5. We can keep all the pocket pairs... Um, Oftentimes, tight aggressive players are capable of raising in the cutoff with every pocket pair. Even though it is a rather higher percentage, I'd still rather keep them in. Um, maybe not put in the jack, uh, offsuit jacks right there, but we can probably keep these ones in. So let's give him this kind of a range. Um, he might be the kind of guy that opens these smaller suited aces, smaller to mid suited aces as well. But look at that. That brings us up to 16%. As we saw, his race first in was 11% over... 
what was the sample? 7 out of 64? Ah, it's not the biggest of samples. Okay, let's give him all the suited aces because it's possible he could be opening those. Um, it's not the biggest of samples at this point, just 500 hands. So, yeah, let's let's make them a little bit wider. So we're going to go 16% opening range here in the cutoff for goats. Whoops. 16%, 214 combos. Decent range. That feels more like it's a, for a tag player, it's often an MP open as opposed to a cutoff. Cutoff people get up to like 20, 23%, somewhere in that range. But... He's on the he's on the taggier side, so we'll stick with that. Oh, who ends up calling? Full blaster calls and GGWP folds. So full blaster, 2721, tight aggressive player. Um, his three bet out of the small blind is zero seven percent in the big blind, four percent total. Um, let's we're gonna put him on just like I don't want to give him aces or kings right here because he'd probably be three betting. Let's give him something that feels like uh like he's calling with some potential. Either a small pocket pair, a suited connector. Let's go pocket pair, fours. Let's do it. So currently, Goats McToke's range versus a baby pocket pair has a 56% equity right now. So he's currently ahead of the small blind caller. Wow, okay. You know, let's not do that. I don't want to automatically just give our opponent a set. Um, <laughs> Okay, let's give him pocket sixes, so a pair plus an open ender. I just don't want to flop him a set right away. Now we're looking at ranges where we're just crushed the whole way. Or looking at equities where we're crushed the whole way. Because as you can see, if our opponent does have fours, I mean, the, the rest of the time we're looking at... Oh, I didn't enter the board yet. Four, whatever. Four, five, seven, I think. Um, look at 87%. So we don't want to we don't want to give him such a strong hand right off the get, right off the get-go. So... Pocket six is still the same thing. Currently, um, our range is ahead, 51%. It was a slightly more ahead versus fours, 56%, yeah. Six is a little bit stronger there. So, four, five, seven, diamond club, spade. So on that board, our opponent flopped an open ender if they just have the sixes. On this board, we have uh, we have every set within our range. We have um, a pair plus an open ender. We have plenty of play pairs with the suited aces and stuff. But for the most part, we just have a lot of overcards, off suit overs, and um, overcard broadways and suited overs as well. Um, and so we don't have the strongest hand right now. You can see our po opponent has a pair plus an open ender. We've only got 34% equity. So let's see what the action is. A check now. Whoops, wrong button. Folding so out of position. Check raising zero. Calling C bets zero. Check fold versus bets is eighty percent when out of position. So Goats McToke should be betting just about one hundred percent of their range right here. Oh, and he just checks behind. So when he should be betting, should be making a good bluff at this pot right here. Hard to hit board, even though he's on a calling range. Pretty hard to hit four five seven rainbow he should be betting a lot um what are the stack sizes full stack full stack i think he'd be betting his sets at least half pot to strike start building something right why why slow play against a tight aggressive player i mean if he's going to fold to your bet he's going to fold but if he's calling he's calling and wanting to continue with anything right here so i'm I, I really like betting just for value and if he folds so be it he didn't have anything and what I mean, you hope he hits a pair on the turn, I guess, is possible. But you're in position. You can control the pot. I'd bet just 80 cents, even 75 cents, slightly under half pot, three big blinds. Over pairs, there's no way he has any of those over. Well, I shouldn't say no way any of them. I don't know. It's possible that I think he's betting aces, kings, queens. I bet jacks and tens are betting. Eights and nines, because they flop some kind of, you know, it's a small over pair. And... They have some kind of draw. Well, the eights have a gut shot. I don't know. I could see those checking behind because of the weak pairness of them. Um, but I think all of these are betting. I think tens and better are betting right here. Especially the tens and jacks because you don't want to give your opponent a free queen, king, or ace. And aces want to bet because you don't want to give them a free uh, eight or three for a straight. And eights and nines just might play timidly and just check behind here. That's why I'm going to keep those in the range. Top pairs, yeah, totally checking behind. Possible, possible checking behind. I think they should bet, but whatever. Pocket pair below, I think those should be betting. Oh, I'm sorry. I think those could be just checking behind as well. Wait, what is the C bet percentage? 
Yeah, he doesn't see bet all that often. I mean, he does bluff a little bit, but not a big a big amount of bluffing. Middle pairs can check behind. Weak pairs totally check in behind. Especially deuces and threes. I mean, if you have threes, you have a gut shot to the low straight. Ace highs can be checking behind. Um, let's see. Gut shot. Open ender. Pair. An ace plus an open ender. Ace three gives you the open ender because you got the wheel draw. I think those can check behind. I don't think those are necessary to bet. Although, you know, I really think a 7-6 would be betting. I think even sixes would be betting here. I know I kept them in up here, but we can remove them. I don't see why they wouldn't be betting. You have a pair plus a draw. Really good draw. Let's remove those from the range. Top pair. Let's remove the best top pair from the range. All right, so we're doing a lot of little removals here and there to really kind of constrict the range. Over cards, okay, so gut shots, possibly checking behind. Over cards, yeah, checking behind. Two card, well, those are included in everything else here. Yeah, so we have them actually checking behind 78% of the time. Or not 78% of the time, 78% of his range is checking behind. On this baby board against this caller, he could just be playing scared right here, you know? I really don't know that he's... Uh, betting all of these. Yeah, I think he's betting those for sure. Over pairs, how yeah, we remove those. His check behind range. I think sixes would bet. I really think they would. Yeah. Just like I said, that open ender, that would be betting as well. And that's just, uh, it's not a pair plus an open ender. That could be checking behind. Yeah, okay. So let's stick with this range. 78% and 150 combos. So he has a wide checking behind range right here. Um, and maybe it's possibly checking because this guy is so loose aggressive. He might be checking behind uh, for value, hoping that he bets on the turn and then he can throw a raise out there. That's totally possible too. So, um, But I think really because of the big full stacks and that board, I really think if he does have... Um, you know, that set or better or those over pairs, I think he's betting on the flop very much most of the time. Four hearts comes. With that four hearts here, um, the hands equity has with pocket sixes, so that's 79%. But, you know, the equity of the range is only at 21%. So things aren't looking so good for our Goats McToaks right here. What is the action? A check? And now just an exact half pot bet. So what is betting half pot? after our opponent shows two streets of weakness here. Um, three of a kind could be betting just going for value. Over pairs are betting, two pairs, top pair, pocket pair below, middle pairs are betting, weak pairs are betting. Everything that just thinks that this missed our opponent's range is probably betting here. Ace highs could finally be waking up for a bluff after our opponent shows two streets of weakness. Gut shots and over cards could be betting too. So I really think 100% of the range, I don't think there's reason to check anything here. Um, the board, that didn't change much on the board. Sure, our opponent could have suddenly hit trips, but we checked behind on the turn. If they hit trips, they want to start going for value. They should bet on the turn after we check behind on the flop, I meant to say. Um, so I think he could be betting this with 100% of his range, either for bluffing or to get value because he missed out on some flop value. I really think that's the case. So I already copied it. Oh, and the interesting thing too is that four hit. We didn't have a four in our range, so it didn't change. Uh, didn't change our cards in one bit. Or I'm sorry, the number of combos we have, one bit. Hundred percent right there. River range time, baby. Oh, actually, he could have raised. Yeah, so that would have changed things depending on Goat's McToke's actions. Oh, the Ace of Hearts hits. Lovely card. We have plenty of aces on our range still because uh, we checked all of them behind on the flop and then we bluffed them on the turn. So it is possible now that that sixes did not catch a straight. If they do have sixes, um, they didn't catch their straight. It's it's uh, It helps our range more than their perceived range over there. So what happens? Ace, he checks and we decide to bet. 
and then just a call. Great. So what are we betting half pot? Once again, you can see that bet sizing half pot. What are we betting for half pot again? We could be bidding with our full houses, just going for value. Um, What's the, oh with the rivered ace okay ace is four ace is full of fours is our full house oh fours full of aces I mean to say um let's see here straights three of a kind we could be betting our good two pair we could totally be betting our top pairs right here just betting on one more street again um just just maybe going for value with those top pairs you can see that they're all aces right there if our opponent checked on the turn with like a five and then check called the I'm sorry checked on the turn or flop with a five and then check called with a five or a seven even on the turn then we could be getting value out of those so i can see these betting for value pocket pair below top um well if we think our opponent could have played the way he did with a five or a seven i think those are making thin value bets here so that's a possibility um middle pairs the eight the seven right there, those are probably just checking behind. Let's take those out of the range. Weak pairs, just checking behind on the river. No made hand, just checking behind. Unless they think a bluff can get through, um, which is which is what it would be if they think they can pull off a delayed double barrel bluff. It's possible, but I don't think I know enough about my opponent to know that they're capable of doing that. So far, only steals from button and small. Oh, wow, I put that note in before. Um, yeah, so... So I'm really thinking it's it's possible that no made hands could be doing the delayed double barrel bluff, but I'm not going to put those in the range right now. So we're going to say that he has uh, these 70 combos in his range. Let's see if I'm right. We just get a call. Ace and a three. So the rivered ace three we can see right there. Makes sense how they played. And blaster. Oh, ace queen. Wow. So we lost the hand. Um, that's pretty interesting. Loose aggressive player out of the small blind just calling with ace queen offsuit instead of three betting. Um, well, small blind zero out of 13. He doesn't like to, I guess he likes, uh, he likes three betting from the big blind, probably with that one big blind discount for his three bets. But from the small blind, look, he calls two bets, only 8%, 0% three betting. This guy's pretty honest in the small blind and plays a tight small blind range. Uh, three bet knit. Oh, I got a three bet knit note right there. Capable of calling third pocket pair on a chicken flop. Um... I guess I could say SB honest. No, SB knit. SB knit as well. Cool. And then the way we can see the ace three makes total sense the way he played. Check in behind, backdoor flush draw, as well as one over card, plus a gut shot on the flop. Okay, I can see checking behind there like we did. We put that in his range. Hitting the four on the turn didn't change anything on the board. So he decides to make a delayed bluff, a delayed C-bet bluff, and then hit the ace on the river. Well, his opponent could have a week five or a week seven that he played this way. So he was just going for thin value. And um, interesting, he didn't decide to raise more. I guess the board was too scary for him to check raise um, on that ace. I mean, I think I might have bet on that ace if I were him uh, to get value out of Goats McToaks here. All right, pretty interesting hand we were. We ended up being successful with it, with our hand reading. I'm happy to see that. 70 combos, 54%. Ace three suited was in the range, and it makes total sense. I'm glad we put that in his opening range pre-flop. Remember in the beginning, I was thinking about taking those out and making it more narrow, but it made sense keeping them in right there, especially in the cutoff, you know. All righty, y'all, thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you later for day 37.